here. Guys, let me know. Can you see? Is there video? No video. Do we have video? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Perry? I'm getting a request failed. Not Guys, let me know. We've got video. Can you see? Oh. We have video. All right. All right, Tass, now try it. Do a refresh and try it. All right. Good, 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 good. You see me. It's not exactly a good thing, though, guys. It's it's the words coming out of my mouth that I hope is the most important thing. So, by the way, Mr. Church, good to see you. <clears throat> a lot of people. Now it's popping up. Now all the comments are, are popping up. But anyway, it's great seeing you. We also had a great championship martial arts, a CMA day and training on Sunday. Had a lot of information. But now let's go back to the question now that you can see me. How is your February looking? How is the start to 2021 looking comparatively to your last few months of 2020? Are you guys looking up? Are things doing okay? You know, and it's curious. I'm curious because like I said, we just came from a seminar <clears throat> and I asked a question at the seminar. <clears throat> thank you, Miss Lance. Uh, thank you, Mr. Church. Um, I asked people, how many people as of right now are down 10% uh, or less of where they were pre-COVID? How many are 10% or less? And I'll tell you, I got to say 65, 70% of the hands went up in the room. And by the way, we had like 165 people. Um, but it was amazing to see that 65 to 70% of them were um, only down 10% or less compared to where they were pre-COVID. And um, then I asked how many are down 10 to 20%. And it was everybody else. There may have been 5% of the people in the room that were down 20% or more as we stand right now compared to um, pre-COVID numbers. Here is Mr. Shane Tassel, everybody. And hey, can welcome to the party, Tass. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sure. Okay, well, good, good. That was a fiasco. <laughs> Hey, so anyway, I was just talking about the CMA day and how it was around 65, 70% of the people in the room were only down 10% or less. By the way, some people in the room were excuse me, higher than where they were pre-COVID. But at the end of the day, I honestly thought we were going to see more hands in the 10 to 20% range or 20% or over, and we just did it. So it's it's phenomenal. And by the way, everybody, take a look at this. This is amazing here. Mr. Blackman in Albuquerque, 71 new students so far since January 1st, best financial February ever in 28 years. <clears throat> By the way, also look at the logo, a CMA and elite school, so congratulations. And Mr. Blackman, we're sorry you got snowed out and couldn't make the connecting flight and make it in for the event, but I know you watch virtual, so. Um, uh, but anyway, and look at this, another CMA and elite, best January and February we have had. Sir, that's phenomenal. Miss Herky, excellent, are up 100 students since we returned from the shutdown. No difference at all, sir. Hopefully we can help you out a little bit, right? And Mark Moore, amazing, meaning I think you're saying Amazing when my video came on, but what we were wondering is how your January and February were going. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, Tass. So, Tass, before we jump into the uh, the yeah. topic of the day, you want to address our martial arts family real quick on anything? Um, yeah, man. I mean, just, you know, I, mean, I got home last late last night and, uh, you know, being around people last, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. <laughs> And, um, you know, around the, 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 you know, some of the top school owners, you know, in the nation, um, it, they, I just think, you know, if we talk about the state of the industry a little bit, I think, you know, it's exciting. 
exciting to know, like you said, you know, uh, a good portion of people are down 10% or less and people are rebounding. And, um, you know, if it hasn't hit you yet, meaning you're not starting to rebound as fast, you know, there's hope. Um, but we can't just hope. We also have to execute. We got to do our part and get in front of the, the traffic and, and get people into our schools. So, um, yeah, exciting listening to, to where people are. I think um, we've talked to a lot of people, whatever you want to call it, if it's just COVID fatigue, if it's the time of the year, if whatever is whatever is happening is, 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 is a good thing. It's exciting to see everybody growing. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited and, uh, and hopeful for the rest of the year. So, um, yeah, it's been exciting. So <clears throat> you said you're excited for the rest of the year. We talked <clears throat> a lot about this and I said, it's exciting. I was excited for you as far as the plan, but you picked this topic, right? And I think we should ask questions. I think we should ask questions, you know, in this topic, but the topic was, what's your 10 year vision for your martial arts school? Uh, but look, look at here, <clears throat> 63 new members since January, not necessarily the best in terms of new students, but with my elite guidance on pricing structure, one of the most profitable. That's phenomenal. And by the way, Ms. Radke, or is that, am I saying that right? We are down 35% uh, student numbers, in student numbers, but gaining momentum quickly. Listen, that's the thing. Those two last comments are really key, right? We don't wanna just get your student count back up to where it is, but like, for example, <clears throat> with Mr. Rivera, he quotes the pricing structure in our guidance, right? as being one of the most profitable because it's not one of the best necessarily in, in students, new students, even though he has 63 new members since January, which some of you would just love, but it's about profitability and maximizing that, right? <clears throat> Earlier today, you, we're talking about the 10 year vision and Tess being that this was your topic and a milestone as this is the first time in the history of the show that you came up with a topic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know, we, we're brothers, man. We got to have each other a little bit. Uh, I want you to run with this, but it's funny because I was in at <clears throat> 9.30 this morning to meet with Mr. Peterman, who's one of our, he's our chief director of operations, breaking down the vision and the corporate structure on how we can get our team members to where we want them to be. And that's about looking forward. And with that though, I also had our in-house accountant print out just to show me where we're at, <clears throat> exactly how much did it cost us to run the martial arts division of our company in January from well October, November, December, and January. I wanted to look at what our expenses were each of those months. So I can look at the excess, put together a formula to give it back to our people and and take care of them and we have to set a, a goal and we have to set a vision and we have to have a plan but Tess, when you came up with the topic what was on your mind and what do you think you can ask if there's questions we can ask so we can get some engagement you know as far as 10-year vision what were you thinking on that why is that important well before that i have given you lots of topics in the past but this is the <laughs> first topic that you've allowed to actually talk about that's true when we do a vote with everyone in the room they usually throw yours out and i i feel bad about that they like to save the best ones for last i'm like <laughs> when are we going to get these things going well topics that you've come up with in the past like what color should the instructor's uniform be i was like i just don't know if that's strong enough <laughs> yes you know that's next week's topic that's great Go ahead. By the way, if you asked that, if that was the topic, we'd have about four times the amount of people on. That's right. That's right. Oh, that's funny, man. Um, you know, I think it's interesting. You know, we, we, uh, a lot of times, look, let me just call it out. So sometimes people think, oh, yeah, well, it's easy for these guys to say, you know, they're, they're successful school. <coughs> deal with the same things that we deal with. And that just went further from the truth, you know. Um, We've had a lot of things that have happened over the course of the last 12 months that we've dealt with like everybody else. And we struggle and there's challenges. And I think it's how we deal with those challenges. But even then, you know, it's easy for us to get caught in a rut. And if you're not mindful of what you're saying and, and listening to what you're saying on a daily basis, um, 
you all of a sudden maybe start looking for different lens. And, you know, it can be negative lens. It can be we focus on all the challenges and all the problems as opposed to necessarily focusing on, on the solutions. And so um, I've caught myself doing that. And, you know, and it's not a fun place to live day after day focusing on those same, you know, on those challenges. And we're never going to get out of those challenges if that's what we're focused on. Right. We've got to focus on on the solutions and, you know, just be again back to this last week. I flew in last Wednesday. Got together with your task. You're breaking up a little bit. You're going in and out together with the CMA team. And, um, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I, I really feel so – because the, when we came up with these topics, it was a couple days ago after, you know, I flew in last Wednesday after the events this weekend. And I think part of the reason that I, I, I gave that topic is because we sometimes are in this place of, of negativity, and what are we doing to get out? And for everybody, that may be something different. You might be able to be the one that says, you know what, I'm going to start focusing on the solution. I'm going to start focusing on the things that I want to get done, and that's fantastic. But I think for everybody – and this isn't a this isn't a pitch, but you know we need a coach or we need something or someone to be able to pull us up and be a hand up when we're not feeling you know uh, good about where things are. And so, <clears throat> like people, I think is so important. Being around a team that's constantly, it's like you know I'll use upgrades as an example when we talk about basics and Black Book Club, right? Basics program is your people. You separate the curious from the serious. Well, in our martial arts industry, you know, as far as an owner, you know, when you're serious about your business, you probably have some sort of a coach and, and, and you're networking with other people that are serious in your industry. You know, the worst thing I think you can do is go to a go to a tournament and start talking about how bad things are because everybody else is going to try and one up you either a they're going to one up you on the amount of students they have or the revenue they're doing and they're lying to you or B. You're going to get the whole, you know, company, you know, misery loves company, you know, concept. And you've got to find the right people to hang out with and network with. And just being around the people this weekend, being down in, in the Orlando offices, seeing what's happening, seeing the things that the vision and, and where things are going and where we've come from and where we're going to. It's exciting. And I think it's important that we have something or someone that when times get tough, they pull, right? <laughs> pulling you towards that next level as opposed to sometimes we get people that are trying to push us from behind and that may be necessary too but i think a lot of times we need to set that vision forward and go what what is the vision where do i want to be and we can get trapped and in, in, in caught up in the day-to-day -day and i just need to survive this week i gotta survive getting my next paycheck i gotta survive getting the next you know paying my rent but if we can paint the vision and you said it mr 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 this weekend which was Working from the top down, meaning, you know, not only from your people, but what is your vision and then start working backwards from that vision. And I think a lot of us, we're in this mode where we're working in the now and eventually we're going to get to that point that we want to get to. But we will never get there if we don't plan for it and if we don't have that vision. So, you know, being around like minded people who inspire you, who motivate you, who encourage you to be better and, and just you got to get the spark back. man. And that's really what it comes down to is getting that spark. And I think part of that is, is laying out your vision. I said 10 year, it could be one year, three year, five year, 10 year, you know, more short term than long term goals. But what is it? What's going to pull you towards that? Why? You know, that's typically what is what is your why? And what's going to pull you towards that on not only a, a, a yearly basis, but on a daily basis, and maybe even an hourly basis as to what decisions are you making today, to make sure you're moving towards that goal. I think, you know, that was kind of the reason why I had put that topic out there. So, you know, whether that's multiple schools for you, whether it's a student count for you, whether it's gross revenue for you, whether it's lifestyle for you, I'm just curious, you know, what are some of the, the visions you have for your school and for your business specifically, right? And maybe that's, I just want to keep my 50 students forever. That's cool too, if that's what your vision is. Um, but I, that doesn't work for me. I need, I always need something bigger, something better. Uh, and I'm going to sidebar for a second, then I'll, then I'll, 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 I'll let you talk, Mets. But, you know, I started, uh, you know, paying attention to, to, to my weight, you know, the, yeah, if people call me, I started paying attention to my weight in January and I'll tell you, um, interestingly enough, you know, when you have a re a, a reason why you make different decisions. 
And, you know, this last week I knew was going to be a challenge because we were down, we were with friends, we had all kinds of great meals, all kinds of things happening. And you got to know what your why is. And interesting enough, Metzger, when I came back today, I was actually 241, just so you know. Um, so it's, it, it, and, and it's exciting because we're, I'm going the right direction, right? And, and you got to have a big enough why, whether it's losing weight, whether it's saving money, whether it's investing, whether it's your school, whatever it is. So what are some of the things, maybe it's your vision, or what are the things or the people that are pulling you forward when you're not feeling like, you know, really like moving on and, 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 and like you're stuck? Because I think so many of us in this industry, in any industry, we can get stuck pretty easy. And I'm uh, just curious to know what, what, what is different? What are their visions that keep pulling them forward? Well, and by the way, you said it could be one year, <clears throat> it could be one year, three year, five year, 10 year, but you know, you should start with a 10 year plan, 10 year goal. Like this is where I want to be, but then you break that down and say, okay, well, if that's where I want to be in 10 years, where is it that I want to be in five, three, one year, right? And then each quarter. So when you break it all down, and then you can break it down monthly, but when you're off of a 10-year plan, you could get down to a quarter because we're almost going to end the first quarter next month. I mean, we're going to end the first quarter next month. And then you want to look at this first quarter and say, what changes did I make to ultimately get me a step closer to that one-year plan, which is going to get me to that three-year, five-year, and 10-year plan? And you really should have some type of target. I mean, <clears throat> regardless of why you do what you do, you know, as far as your passion of martial arts, how do you know when you're doing a good job in your school? And then you're going to say, well, my students and this and the other. And I, and I get that. But you, you could, you know, a gerbil does a great job running when it's just on the wheel, too. Right. And it's just not getting anywhere. We're just doing a good job. Right. But we need a target. We need to we need a, a, a way to determine knowing that we're on the right path doing a good job. But you're the only one who can define that target. There's no right or wrong. You just got to define it. And uh, if your 10 year plan is, look, I just in 10 years, I want to be exactly where I am doing what I'm doing because I love it so much. No problem. That's your plan. That's your path, right? So we just want to make sure we don't go out of business. We want to make sure we maintain the students that we have, right? Or the numbers. So there's no right or wrong, but you really need to, to determine what it is. Now, here's what I'd like to ask everybody. And, and I'd like to see if there's consistencies. And I'd also like to see how easy this is for you. What are three of your weaknesses in business? Just comment one, two, three. What are three of your weaknesses in your martial arts business? What are three weaknesses? And then we'll talk about the positives, but list those out. Let's see if there's any consistencies here on where you feel I have, you have weak areas that can be approved upon. And as they're doing that, let me, let me give a great example. Uh, you know, we were, when you have a target, right? And you're adamant about the target, and you and you should right. By the way, <coughs> Metzger Metzger doesn't necessarily operate this way. I do, um, but you got to do whatever works for you. I you know one of the things that I am big on is I'm big on putting things I got, whether it's pictures, right? Whether that's a vehicle, whether it's a boat, whether it's a house, what whatever it is, right? Vision boards, whatever you want to call it. That's one way. Writing down your goals every morning, every evening is another way, right? Or just having it and, and talking to yourself about it every day is another way. And so, you know, I'm a big fan of, of, of writing those things down because it just keeps it top of mind awareness. But here's a perfect example. If my goal is I want to have 2,500 students, right? And I'm in two locations right now. Not saying that this can't be done. You can certainly do that in two locations, but that's quite the battle that you're going to be fighting. I know that I'm going to need more locations, which means I know I'm going to need, I need more staff. I'm going to need more of a team. But when you have that vision, and Metzger and I, we, a couple different times this weekend, this actually came up, right, or this week, you focus on not only the 10-year, the 5-year, the 3-year, the 1-year, the 1-month, the, one year, the, one month, the one week, the daily, but the hourly. And here's an example. So I had uh, one of my 
Latino uh, leadership student who was 16 years old and he moved to Georgia and the kid was a little rock star and he moved and, and um, you know, I had heard when he moved, you know, he, we, we always had planted the seed that he, he just found out that he wants to come back when he's 18. He's, he's 17 now. He wants to come back when he's 18. He wants to be a, a head instructor. Metzger had the conversation with me. Dude, you call him like right now. Don't wait the year to, to plant that seed because anything can happen between now and this afternoon, now and next week. And we've seen this happen time and time again. But that's really what my goal is then jumping on the phone, having a conversation. Hey, this is what I heard. Is that something you're interested in doing? And then painting the picture. And once you have the vision, you can share the vision with your team or anybody else. And now we've planted that seed as opposed to, well, I'm just going to wait a year till the kid turns 18. And then maybe I'll reach back out. Well, in the meantime, he could have decided that he wanted to enlist in the military. He could have had a, 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 an uncle that says, hey, I got this great job opportunity or career opportunity for you. And all of a sudden, that opportunity for me to get him back is gone. And sometimes we wait and we sit back on our heels when we should be making a decision today and we put it off. And by putting it off, you know, a series of events can happen where that thing that we're trying to accomplish may not come to fruition because we waited. And I think that, you know, there's a couple lessons this week that, that happened even in the office that we talked about, you know, hey, we can't wait till tomorrow. We need to do this to today. Take action on this decision today. And, uh, and I think that's that's really, really important for people to understand, you know, put it in place today, whatever. That's right. Because so let's just talk about this a little bit. So Mr. Martin here says one, two and three complacency. So let's address that for a second. Mr. Blackman, staff, staff, staff. <coughs> Ms. Herkey says, I always want to discount our pricing. That's one, two and three. Right. Um, lack of consistency in following systems, bench strength, systems and staff. There's there's, you know, staff pops up. So so first of all, listen, uh, confidence in myself was one that I saw. Uh, here you go, Miss Lance. Right. A lack of confidence in myself. So, guys, listen, what's one of the things I think Tass knows about me, too, and he's doing this, too, is I like to try to get the mission accomplished as efficiently and as simply as I can. I, I don't like to make it more difficult than it needs to be, right? So when you guys list your weaknesses, let's just say confidence, or when you list your top three and in your mind, the top three are the same points because it's such a big problem you feel from your perspective. break that down now and start taking steps and making that weakness a strength. So if it's a lack of confidence, right? <clears throat> you got to practice. You got to role play, whatever that is, whatever you're lacking confidence in, you must practice. And it may start in an empty school in front of a mirror and then in front of a family member and then in front of a couple people, right? But you, you got to practice. If you practice, you'll be more confident. And when you get results from wherever you lack confidence, you will get confident. And this is another thing Tass and I talked about. You know, we have this sense of humor. We, it is what it is. I mean, and, and we like to have fun with everything. We find humor in everything. And I play the shtick of the, <clears throat> uh, the ego guy and the, and the, you know, and just like, you know, we got it all figured out, but that's like my sarcastic humor. But in a serious note though, I'm very, very confident in what I do as far as if I work with a school. I believe that I'm very good at helping people uh, build their business up, uh, specifically in the martial arts industry, but I believe I can help anybody in any business industry because I've been doing it for so long and I have seen the results time after time after time after time. And when you do that, you build confidence. It's no different than your students. If you have a student who's just not confident in themselves and they go and compete in a tournament and they lose and they lose and then they win and then they win again and then they win again and then they win again, you're, they're automatically going to start getting confident. So it's an easy fix. But for everybody else on here, let me just tell you, when I asked you to put down your three biggest weaknesses in your school, right? Pick one. 
Now, out of the three, pick one and just work on that one. Because here's what's gonna happen. If you pick on that one and you focus on it and you consciously think about how can I start making this weakness a strength, eventually it'll become a strength, but another weakness will pop in to take its spot, right? And then you can prioritize the list of three again and just pick one. You know, one of the things that we do when we consult schools is like, for example, this weekend, there was so much information, right? So much information. But if you could just implement one system a month, just one thing where you can change, for example, complacency, I saw on here, time management. Let's just focus on a portion of that complacency or time management. So then you gotta ask yourself, well, what is my plan? Where's, what's my target? What am I trying to do here? Where do I wanna be in one year, three year, five year, 10 year? All right, what's gonna get me one step closer? Well, for example, because there's a lot of staff things. For example, I need help, right? And I really need to find someone. <clears throat> so the first question that we'll ask is, so what does your current ad say right now to find staff members? And your response is gonna be why well, I, I don't have an ad out yet. We'll get the ad out now. Like hang up the phone and get the ad out. Now, I'm not saying I want you to be looking for people from the outside before you look inside. But the biggest mistake you can make in your business, and I said this before, is waiting for that 12-year-old to turn old enough because they're so good to finally help you, give you time to maybe work on the business or a little relief so you can be more efficient in your business or provide better customer service. If you don't have that person, and that's an example, you look now. And by the way, people, I've asked people, yeah, I ran an ad. Everybody was just crazy. I didn't, the resumes were crazy. These martial arts people are nuts. All right, is the ad still running? No, it's not running right now. So here's what I say to people on the staffing front. Be looking for your next staff member as aggressively as you're looking for your next student. Do you imagine if you tried to get new students or marketed for new students just for a week and if you didn't really get any students, you just kind of stopped and you just sat there and you waited. So that's on the staffing front. On the that's time management, go ahead, Tess. I say some of the staffing thing. Literally, I just, before this call, I hung up on another call. And uh, mm -hmm. one of, one of the, 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 who I was talking to said, well, I just got back. I just got my instructors quitting. Now, they gave them about a year, year and a half notice because they're going to college. I said, well, do you have an ad out? And the answer was, no, I don't have an ad out. So th literally 40 minutes before this, that was the call. Well, you need an ad out. And always, number one. And it's it, it, and, and the reason for that is because you always should be looking for people. There's a way to handle that system and how we bring people in if we find a gem, so on and so forth. But if nothing else, you should always have that ad out, number one. Number two, some people think, well, a year and a half, that's forever. I'll start looking later. And then all of a sudden time goes by and the year and a half is up and we don't have anybody. But isn't it interesting that when you lose somebody in your school, a team, a, a team member with a program director or instructor, how fast that oftentimes you can get that place filled. Now, that's the good news and the bad news, because you may be filling that position because of convenience as opposed to filling that position because it's the right thing to do. Right. But it's interesting. It's like. If Metzger and I go to a movie together and it's a 3D movie and he wears the 3D glasses and I don't wear the 3D glasses and we leave the movie, you're like, dude, that was going to say, dude, that was an awesome movie. I'm like, well, that was horrible. I, it was blurry. I couldn't see anything in that movie. But we sat next to each other in the same chairs, watching the same movie, everything the same. It's because of the lenses that we had on. And so what Metzger is telling you guys is every day as an owner, you have to have the lens of looking for good people for your school. And you've got to be adamant about that. And I, I really believe that, and by the way, I'm saying this to you guys, I don't do it every day, right? And it's a good reminder. And this is why writing down what your goals are. I, you know, and, and whether that's, you know, I, ha I have an amazing uh, a team of, 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 of instructors and program directors. I'm always looking for whatever you, however you want to write your goals, but something that triggers you every day when you're in line at Starbucks or when you're at a store, 
you know, looking for those great personalities. And we talked about this not that long ago, two weeks, maybe, maybe, it was, maybe even sooner than that, but having a business card. And when you see those types of people, give them your business card, say, listen, I think you're amazing at what you do. And if you're interested, I've got an unbelievable career opportunity for you. And be able to sit down and have that conversation with them. These are some important things I think we need to understand in, our, in, 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 in the school industry if our intent is to have a team of people. You're all going to say we want to hire from within. Of course we do, right? We absolutely do want to do that. But it doesn't mean there aren't great people that we could train in uh, you know, to, to do that job as well. So always interesting. But by the way. I'm pretty quick. Uh, but by the way, all the people that want to hire from within, what are you doing from the moment your students join? At what point are you painting a picture for them that this is a great job or career opportunity? Are you just telling them that? Are you even telling them that? Is there a, po a path to keep them on that path so you don't have to wait like this, so you can hire from within? There's a whole different, there's a whole seminar we can do on this, but that's on the staff side, right? Here's another one. How about personal? Students quitting and building things all over again, right? So it says COVID in Canada has really challenged mental health. Um, I think the best thing for that is to know you're not alone. And this is what Tass was saying earlier. You get into an organization or, or the consulting or the My Elite family or another group where you're around everybody that's going through what you're going through. And this is for everybody, not necessarily Mr. Weaver, but and you you don't just see them at the seminars. You call them, you say, man, I am just having a tough time. What are you doing? How has it been for you? I mean, look, you want to talk about the mental health thing. I could go back up here to the Blackmans who, let's just see, where's the Blackmans comment? Let's just look. Uh, the Blackmans who have been working with me for a long time in Albuquerque, New Mexico, they were the last, pretty much the last, one of the last to really open up, they're still not fully open. They even said that's with allowing right now 10 students. But in the fourth quarter of last year, Miss Blackman was really down. They were all down. They were like, I cannot believe it. The governor shut everything down again. We can't do it. We can't, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's about encouragement and planning and systems. And then they, they have a post like this now. 71 new students so far since January, best financial February ever in 28 years. But Mr. Blackman, if you're still watching this, what did I tell you we would do in 2021, even when we were down? I said, you gotta face the music. You gotta know what you're up against because we talked about attrition and percentages, but I believe I also told you, we're gonna have a record year. And if he believes me, or at least believes me enough, that encourages you to get through this. So Mr. Weaver, I will tell you, if you have the right systems in place, and if you have the right plan, you have nothing to worry about. You're gonna get through this. Just like I told every single one of our CMA schools and and, uh, and elite clients that, that were willing to listen. Um, it, it, it's, here you go, look. Look at Mr. Blackman. They lost 400 students during this thing, 400. But they're gonna have the best February they ever had, ever. And they've signed up 71 since January. But it's also about knowing your, where your school is and where you want it to go, which is we talk, we're talking about this 10 year plan, right? So um, we, we talked about staff, right? We talked about the, the, mental, the, the mental health thing is, don't surround, Tass said it, don't surround yourself with other people that are just bitching and whining and griping. That's only going to hurt you even more. That's going to bring you down more. You hang out with people that say, we understand what we're up against. I'm not worried. We got to pivot. We got to make a plan. We got to, whatever the terminology you want to use, we just got to know where we're going and nothing is going to stop us from getting there. But you can't get there unless you know where your weaknesses are. And so you can't say a weakness is COVID. No, COVID is causing weaknesses that we never had before. COVID is causing a weakness now in recruiting. All right, well, let's talk about recruiting. I need to get new members. So my school's not open. 
How do I get them on the virtual? How do I sell them on the value of this? How can I get people involved? Where do I go find? And we put together a plan. I mean, look, obstacles are going to come up. Don't focus on the obstacle. Say, okay, well, I can't eradicate COVID right now. I'm not going to convince my governor or anyone in my community to forget about it and just come in and enroll. So it is what it is. Now, what do I got to do to still be successful? Because I am not stopping. But but you can't say that unless you know where you're going. I mean, you, you got to know what your objective is. You can't accomplish a mission if you don't know what the mission is, right? So the biggest thing here is pick one weakness and focus on making it a strength. And I just want to bring this up, Tess. I don't know. Can you see the comments, Tess? I uh, know I can't. All right, one of my staff members, Mr. Schwartz, one of my staff members has some martial arts experience, but very different from my style. I'm working on training him up in various areas. As he grows, he will begin to get more responsibilities. Too good of a person to pass up. You're absolutely correct. Mr. Blackman, I appreciate and and humbly, you know, uh, will we'll not let you down. I believe and trust you. And then Herky said, Chris Short, Schwartz, so what is he doing? Is he getting paid to not teach martial arts, but to take it? Well, see, that's another thing, right? There are certain people. So let me let me just say this, and then Tass, I'm throwing it back to you. But Tass, you said something, and I said it. We both said you got to always be looking for good people, whether you need someone or not, because it is so hard to find good people. It's so hard to find that you cannot start looking for people when you need them. So you always have to have an ad out if you want to grow your business. By the way, if you're a one-man show, if you're a one-man show and things are tough right now, I'm going to tell you, always keep your eyes open to find somebody. Because when you find a gem, right, it's like mining for gold or, in Tassa's case, Bitcoin, right? When you're mining out there and you got to find the gems, when you find that person, you got to figure out how to get them on your team because good people will help build your business. However, like Ms. Herkey's asking, so what's he doing? Is he getting paid to not teach martial arts, but to take it? I hope not. I hope that taking martial arts is part of what he's doing. But if I find a good person that has a passion for what I do and what I can provide, and I bring them in and I say, look, and by the way, this is a line I've used. If my guys are watching this now, they know. Right now, if you believe in me, this is my vision. This is my 10-year plan. This is my five-year plan. And if you're so passionate about it and you have a plan and you can show them, I need somebody to come along this ride with me and help me get there. And if that person's you, I want to apologize and be honest. Today, right now with where I'm at, you're going to be overworked and underpaid. And I just want to be honest with you. But if you trust me and you trust in this vision and in this plan, there will become a time where we'll be overpaid and underworked. And this is what I mean by that. And then you have a plan for them on where they can get in your school. So if I find a good person, if they're not prepared to teach martial arts, but I'm looking for an instructor, help me make phone calls. Help me go out and, and run a, a booth or meet with a school or market or set appointments or just greet people as they come in because I believe that customer service is gonna help me grow my business. You gotta change your, your focus again and stay focused on the mission and Tass said it earlier. I work from the top down. I don't work from the bottom up. This is where I wanna get to. So every, and you, you quoted me many times this last week hanging out is everything you do, every decision you make, just ask yourself, is this gonna hurt me get here? Or is it going to help me get here? It's either going to hurt or help you. And if it's going to help you, use it and take it. But you got to have a plan. Task, throwing it, throwing it back to you, buddy. But, you know, sometimes, you know, we, when you guys are listing some of these things, too, and this is everybody, um, and I've, I'm trying to think of a most recent example, but that's going to remember because you know, he always does. But sometimes we, we, we look at maybe, a, you know, like, all right, this is what I need to be doing in my school. Like, I got it. I know what I need to do. This is what I got to go do. But sometimes we don't ask ourselves the right question. 
And that's also why you need a coach sometimes because it, it you may think like, so, and, and I'll give you, I'll give you a great example of this. You know, I was talking with somebody um, that was doing a, a, a free 20 minute consult call and the goal was to enroll more students. Well, when I looked at the numbers, they had a $94 student value. This is an example. They don't, they don't need more students as their number one priority because I can take the 150, 170 students they have right now and take them from 94 bucks to $185 without enrolling another student with the proper business systems. But we get our head on, we got to enroll more students because that's how I'm going to make more money. And that's the last thing that we want to do in this particular case. We need to fix your internal systems so when we do enroll a student, we're not nickel and diming. We're maximizing our success and maximizing our revenue with those students through the systems that we use. That's one example of that. So, you know, asking yourself the right questions. Tony Robbins is big on this. You know, you ask yourself the question, man, why am I not getting students? How come I just can't get students? How come I'm not getting students? You And by the way, I've been in that trap, right? And your mind is the greatest computer there is. It's going to give you answers as to, why you're not getting enough students. But that's not the right question to ask you. The question is, what can I do today to get more students? And that seems so simple and so you know rudimentary, but we find it and it happens all the time. And so sometimes when you voice concerns out loud, they're like, you know, you can talk to somebody, a mentor coach, they're like, that's not the right question. This is the right question. And it completely shifts your mindset and sends you into a different direction. That's one part. The second thing is this, talking about great people. So Chris Schwartz in this example found a gem. Guy doesn't know martial arts. Well, what would you rather have in your school? An average person who is really good with the systems or an unbelievable person that they understand, they're quick-witted, they're smiley, they're bubbly, they're, 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 they have charisma and personality, but they don't know your systems. You got to train them your, your systems. Well, which person would you rather have at the end of the day? Well, at the end of the day, I want the one who's got charisma and personality and wit and charm and all those things because I can teach them the business systems. But sometimes if I can get an expert in business systems, it's very difficult to teach the charisma, the charm, the wit and all those types of things. So, you know, I, I think you got to look at your, your, you know, when you're looking for people, that's another consideration that you have to make. Um, it's so much easier when people have those things and we can just teach them the systems and now the system becomes just part of who they are. And at the end of the day, they're going to be a very, very, very good employee for you and a great team player and have a great career in, in what you do because you found the right personality to fit what you're trying to accomplish. So I think that's another piece of it to look at um, you know, when you're, when you're looking for people. And by the way, you're you're if you're listening to this, if you're a school owner, you're, you're I'm assuming you're a martial artist. So even if you found somebody to, you know, to work on another part of the business, the front end of the business, while well, you do what you love, stay on the floor and teach great classes and let this great gem that you may find do the appointments, do the enrollments, do the renewals, do the upgrades, do customer service, make sure everyone feels great. I mean, until they learned your system. Like Mr. Schwartz said, they were a black belt in another system. Look, martial arts is martial arts. And then you got to just train them on your specific curriculum, let's say, right? But um, th that, that's, besides, that's besides the point. The point is, is understand where your weaknesses are. Focus on one thing at a time. And, you know, if you're listening to this, um, you know, I, I wonder if, if you think we can help you, where are you, right? Join join the Maya Foundations program. I mean, you know, if you, if, if you don't join it or didn't join it, at the end of the day, right, we could say, oh, I can't afford it or I'm not ready yet. Or don't join us. Join somebody that you think can help you. But take action because, but I said this at the seminar, how committed are you to your success? And people were saying on a scale of one to 10, 10. 10, 10, then go sign up for the wealth program. I mean, it was how, how committed are you to building wealth? This was in the wealth seminar. I said, really, you're a 10? Mm -hmm. Then go go sign up. And the majority of them did, right? Because it's like, what are you, what are you waiting for? The only reason you wouldn't do it is because you just don't believe we can get you your investment back 
or triple it or 10 times it or 50 times it. Which is I mean, that's the only reason. Or you don't believe in yourself. Right. Or you don't believe that you're going to actually execute what you got to do for the inf with the information that you get. That's the only two reasons. So th if we ever talk one on one and you ask questions, at the end of the day, if you trust that we can help you, then you jump on board and you get in the. By the way, Foundations is a whopping two month program. It's two months. It's four phone calls. But I believe it's going to totally change the trajectory of your business. Go ahead, Tad. And you said it. I mean, just so everyone's clear. Well, that's not the case. I'm afraid. Well, you're afraid of either that whoever you're talking to can't deliver the results and you don't trust it, or you're afraid, like you said, that you're not going to be that you're not going to go take action, and execute. So that really is the fear, right? So. And by the way, I want to. Mr. Schwartz just put a comment. Mr. Schwartz, if you're still with us, he said I joined Maya back in July of 18, right? But my biggest mistake with that was not joining earlier. But everybody, listen, Mr. Schwartz in July of 18 actually wanted to join my elite. And he could comment on if I'm telling you the truth or not. But he was at the Super Show, wanted to join my elite. And I told him, no, you're not ready for my elite. And uh, here's what you need to do. And here's the success I want to see. And when you get there, then let me know. And then I'll let you know if I want to sign you up for my elite. And I believe, Mr. Schwartz, I gave you free advice at the time. But you can you can comment on that. Thing is, is I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, you know, personally, I wouldn't sign anybody up for something that I didn't know would, would help. The only problem that I can't, the only thing that I can't do is do the work for you. That's That's the only thing. I can't do it for you, right? But, you know, this is not a, a pitch. This is a plead. You know, what I'm doing is a plead because, again, we see the same names every week. But when I see people put up there their weaknesses or their, you know, it's mental health. I'm just breaking. This is hard, you know, um, and staff. When are you going to let us really help you? And if you don't want to use us, use somebody else. I mean, there's some good people out there, right? Um, and by the way, we appreciate this, guys. I mean, Maya Foundations is worth more than I'm paying. I hope, I hope so. <laughs> and Mr. Pam says, Maya Foundations, you will make your investment back with even small tweaks. And uh, and Mr. Schwartz is just backing up what I just told you. It was 100% accurate when I told him I'm not gonna sign him up. Um, anyway, uh, look, we just wanna help. I mean, it's 2021, guys. What's that plan? What's that vision? So here's your homework. Write down your 10-year vision, five-year, three-year, one-year, quarterly. What are you going to do this quarter to get you one step closer to that one year? And in the one year, when you look at the overall year, did that get you closer to the three-year? And in that three-year, did that get you closer to the five-year? And if you want us to help you, we'd love to help you. It's Maya Foundations. It's four phone calls. If you feel we can help you, you can go into the Maya Growth Program. And that's a step up where it's a little, a little bit more information. And if you feel there's value there, you can go to the elite program where you're one on one with one of the consultants specifically talking about your challenges. But I didn't do it on this broadcast. But you guys also should also say, you know what? Here are my strengths. Here's what I'm really good at. And you should at least list the top three things that you know you're really, really good at. But when you list those strengths out, look at them and say, do these strengths get me closer to where I want to be? Because sometimes they don't. Right. So you got to you got to make sure everything aligns. Go ahead, Tass. Yeah, I'm just I'm just processing, man. I mean, there, look, you know. I was just down there. We were talking about real estate. You know, here's a perfect example. I am. I'm not a real estate expert, so you find a coach, you find something for and and and, you know, and you take their advice and you ask questions, you listen and and sure. Can anybody go out and, and, and invest in real estate? Yeah, absolutely. You can. Right. But there's sometimes it's the fear of the unknown or man, I could lose a lot of money doing this, or I don't know or how to invest. And then you just go do it anyways, you know? Um, and that can be dangerous. That that's, that's where the danger sets in and you need someone that's been there, that's done it and to, to, to coach you, whether that's, whether that's, you know, in, in health, whether that's in wealth, whether that's in your, 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 your business operations, whatever it is. I mean, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have people that have been down that road before you. Um, it's so much easier. You know, you, Tony Robbins has a saying, right? You can turn decades into days. 
and there's truth in that. You know, when you can do that and take 10 years of, of information and be able to deliver it faster. As a matter of fact, here's the point. As martial artists, what is really your goal? Is it for you to deliver the same material, the same curriculum that you grew up on and have martial arts be flatlined the same way, the same skill level, everything the same as it's always been from the day you learned it? Or is your goal as instructor, like my goal, is to teach my students way faster than it took me to get there because I can give them tips, tricks, and hacks to get that information way faster. So at the end of the day, I left martial arts better than it was when I found it, right? And I think that's an important thing to understand. Our goal as a coach, as a mentor, as an instructor, is to really streamline, streamline our students to be the best that they can be physically at the martial arts, right? Whatever their physical best is. But also, you know, how can they grow as an individual, grow as a person? And when we can streamline that, and we can give them those tips, tricks, and hacks to get them there faster. There's a, there's a lot of revenue there as well, right? You can help when you can help people. The bigger the problem that you solve, the bigger the problem that you solve, the higher you know uh, uh, income that you're going to make. And so look at that, at, you know, from a perspective. And by the way, when typically what happens is if there's someone that can solve your problem and you have this problem, what are they doing? They're pulling you up to their level. That's the thing I was talking about earlier. When someone's pulling you to their level. You can try it. We can try it. You can go through the school of hard knocks. You can do all that stuff, but it's just so much easier when you've got someone there that's been there before you and can steer you in the right direction. Be like, nope, this is the way we got to go. Let's, let's do it. And uh, it's just, it, it, it will propel your success forward. Again, it doesn't matter who it is, but find somebody. Do not do this alone. It's so much harder. And by the way, when you do it alone, you're, you're by yourself when the struggles happen. And when you have success, you're by yourself. And that's not fun either. It's no fun to be successful and not share with anybody. Good, good points. Good, good end to this webinar or be live. <laughs> so Tass, it was a fast weekend, man. We had a great seminar, great event. Um, thanks for tuning in everybody. But you're right. It's so much more fun when you're on the, as we call it, the train with other people that are excited about reaching the top of the mountain. So, um, and Miss Herkey said, we would be better off had I just done what Shane told me to do when I was with Elite. Well, ma'am, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is, guys. So look, if you want to try foundations, we'd love to have you in foundations. Uh, once you go through it once, you can go through it again for a refresher. There's no extra cost. You pay for it once. Get, you know, check it out. Maya Foundations, whatever, backslash ShaneTasselIsTheMan.com. <laughs> um, but I know, you, look, at the end of the day, if anybody here wants to do foundations, figure out a way to find out how you get to foundations, right? I mean, you call Century, you call Maya, you, pers you message us. Cause I don't have the thing ready for you. I don't have the link, you know, but you're, 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 you're martial artist. But at the end of the day, make your list, look at your weaknesses and say, then there's nothing going to stop me. I'm going to make this a strength. I'm going to have fun doing this. I'm going to change lives and, and I'm going to better my life and my team's life. Oh, and look who happens to be on Chris Rodriguez, myfoundations.com. Always there to save us. And we appreciate it. Always there. She's always watching. That's right. It's, it's getting a little creepy. <laughs> She's always listening. Always. Always watching. Whiskey. Always watching. <laughs> so thank you, Miss Chris. Um, and by the way, if you need students, you invest. By the way, every one of our CMA and, and elite clients and you, Tass, I told everybody this. Right now, you guys look at those comments earlier. People are enrolling now. They had what you called the COVID fatigue. People are enrolling. I told everybody, double your investment on your social media ad spend. So if you guys want new students, person, send a, uh, uh, what do you call them? DMs, PMs, what are they called? Are they called? Yeah. PMs? Fine. No, you know what? I was taking Robitussin DM. I was getting that confused with PM. So DM Chris Rodriguez, she'll run the ads for you. She'll set up uh, 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 your social media ads 
And I told everybody, whether you're do, if you're doing it, double or triple your ad spend. And hence the Blackmans did that. And that's why he's sitting at 70 some new students since January. That's why people are having records. You know, don't just sit back and be like, this is great, people are calling. When people are calling or getting wanting information, that's when you push even harder and you go bigger on your investment to get people in. So we're here for you guys. We're here for you. So until next week. And if anyone is not on the five day lead challenge, <coughs> I don't know where to find that either. I'm sure Chris will post it, but next week, five days in a row, five Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're going to get strategy and tactics every day, Monday through Friday, to fill your pipeline with leads. It's free. It's free. That's free. I was just going to say, that's free. So we start Monday. Chris Rodriguez, myself, Shane Tossel, five-day lead challenge. Look it up somewhere. Check the yellow pages. You'll find the number in there for the five-day lead challenge. But seriously, if you don't know what that is, Call Maya, get in touch with Chris Rodriguez, call Michael Perry, call Shane Tossel. Don't call me. You can PM him or DM him, he said. Either one, whatever is easier. So, guys, we're here to help this industry rock in 2021. Let's do this, guys. So, good luck. We love being here. We love helping you out. And, Tass, glad you got home safe. Thank you, my friend. I'm enjoying the 38 degree weather as opposed to the 85 degree weather. You see this outfit I'm wearing? It's very nice. That's the t-shirt. Oh, well, you're wearing a t-shirt too. Right. When it's 38 in Wisconsin, you wear a t-shirt. Except I have the AC on in the office. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right, everybody. Take it easy. All right. Thanks, Matt. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.